Thank you so much, Minister Hal Thompson, for that wonderful meditative music. Greetings. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. And teach me, for you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Psalm 25, from verse 4 to 5. My name is Elder Sunday Olugu of Troop Memorial Presbyterian Church. Good morning, all children of God, especially the saints of the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans, Springfield Garden Presbyterian Church, Hollis Presbyterian Church, Troop Memorial Presbyterian Church, Westminster Presbyterian Church in Cedar Manor, First Presbyterian Church in Far Rockaway, First Presbyterian Church in Jamaica, and Downton Presbyterian Church. Again, we welcome you into this sacred space in the omnipotent name of Jesus Christ. Please join us in the hymn of praise. I shall not be moved by Minister Hal Thompson. Just like a tree. 
Let us go to God in our prayer of invocation, confession, and assurance. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we invoke your blessings upon us this day. We abide in your word which assures us that when we pass through the waters, you will be there and through the rivers they shall not overflow us. And when we walk through the fire, we shall not be burned. Mother and Father God, we welcome the movement of your Holy Spirit in our lives, for we are your sanctuary. Abba, we confess that we do not always live in the spirit of oneness in spite of all the beautiful in this world you created. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Abba, God, please look on us with compassion. Come into our hearts and take away our arrogance, prejudice, hatred, greed, unforgiveness. Cleanse us of every sin that separates us from you. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we embrace your mercy. Please forgive what we have been, amend what we are, and direct what we shall be. Thank you for, in the unifying Christ, we have been forgiven. Hallelujah, amen. Our hymn of preparation is When the Role is Called Up Yonder by Minister Hal Thompson. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, when the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the same earth shall gather over on the other shore, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there.
prayer for all people and churches. Hello, beloved. My name is Reverend Raymond Williams. I'm from the Westminster Presbyterian Church in Cedar Manor. Please join me for the prayer for all people. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we lift the body of Christ in prayer, we make special intercession for all the saints in the Presbyterian churches of Southeast Queens. This morning, we are lifting our prayers for Ashley Noble and Mrs. Jones. They're both recovering from surgery. Healing for David Watley and strength for his wife Mildred and their daughters. We pray for God's continued strength and comfort for Miss Corrine Sneed and her family. We pray for the Daniels family and Sheila Covington and her family. And we pray, of course, for the Reverend Dr. Edward Davis and the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans family. Father, we're praying for the leadership of the Dunton Presbyterian Church today. Sister Sheila McKenzie, Sister Frances White and her family, Sister Marion Lindsay, the Pilgrims family, and the Throop Memorial Presbyterian Church and their families. We pray today for Sadie Morris and the Hollis Presbyterian Church family. And of course, let us not forget about the Reverend Carol Steptoe. We pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless her in a special way. We're praying today for the Westminster Presbyterian Church family, Deacon Edna James, Brother David Drakes, and my brother Selwyn Williams, who is still recovering from open heart surgery. We pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless him and watch over him. We're also praying for Everett Rome today. Touch him right now, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We're praying for the James family, the Levy family, and the First Presbyterian Church in Far Rockaway family. We're praying for the Springfield Gardens Presbyterian Church and the First Presbyterian Church in Jamaica. Father, we know, Lord, that when we pray these prayers, that you not only hear us, but we know, Father, that you'll also heal us. Touch our churches, O oh God. Touch your people, O oh God. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all that you've done and all that you'll continue to do. In Jesus' name, that all God's people say, Amen. This morning, God's holy words, Old Testament, Genesis chapter 2, from verse 18 to 21, to be read by Sister Blanche Smith. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Genesis 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to a man. The sermonic selection is Soon I Will Be Done by Minister Hal Thompson. Sooner will be done Troubles of this world Troubles of this world Troubles of this world Of this world Soon I will be done Troubles of this world 
Born on home to live with God And there's gonna be no more There'll be no more No more weeping and wailing There's gonna be no more There'll be no more No more weeping and wailing There's gonna be no more There'll be no more No more weeping and wailing Gone on home to live with God mm -hmm. Now these brothers they done With the troubles of this world Troubles of this world Oh the troubles of this world Now these brothers they done With the troubles of this world Gone on home To live with their God Then there's gonna be no more There'll be no more No more weeping No more wailing There'll be no more There'll be no more No more weeping No more wailing There'll be no more There'll be no more No more weeping No more wailing There'll be no more, no more, weeping, and wailing. Gone on home to live with their God. This morning, sermon will be preached by Sister Blanche Smith of the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans. It is called The Color Black. Let's pray. Merciful Father, you are my guiding light, my bright morning star, my redeemer, my sustainer, and I seek your strength and peace this morning. Guide me, my Lord. Lift me up, Lord, and show me the path you want me to walk as I praise your name and give you all the glory. Silence me, silence me, Lord, that you may be heard in this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Good morning, church family and visitors to our virtual service. To those who don't know me, my name is Blanche Smith. I am the wife of Pastor Weldon Smith. Pastor Weldon and I have been married for 68 years and proud members of this great church for 40 years, the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans. I am happy to be the message bearer this day and I thank the ministerial committee for the opportunity. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Come on now, come on. I said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us also rejoice in our God-given lives. And let us rejoice in each other's lives. Let us all exhibit the qualities that tend to give pleasure to one another. Because our God, our wonderful Savior, saw fit to make us different sizes, different shapes and different colors. According to God's holy word, Genesis 2, God Almighty breathed the first breath of life into us all. And God alone determines what the life is, determines when to take that life away. We black people have cried out since the time of slavery. I can't breathe, I can't breathe because of the chokeholds of racists. No one has the right to crush the life out of black people and steal what God has lovingly given us. Since time began and God created races and the colors of mankind, we black people have been blessed. We have been blessed with attributes that other races have not, even to our color. As an artist, I can tell you there are many colors in the crayon box, but the crayon box is a dominant prevalent and bold color. It underlines and outlines the other crayons in the crayon box. And so have black people underlined the success of the United States of America. Black men and women persevered through centuries of oppression and became noted contributors in every field of endeavor. A black man, Dr. Charles Richard Drew, develop ways to process and store blood plasma in blood banks prior to the outbreak of World War II. The blood plasma was stored up by the armies, 
of Great Britain and used without hesitation during the war with the Germans. When the U.S. soldiers came over to fight in Europe, they brought, seg they brought segregation and racism with them. The racists wanted the blood of Negro soldiers separated from the blood of white soldiers. But when the white racist soldier was wounded and near death, hollering, I can't breathe, they used a black man's invention to save themselves. Dr. Drew's invention saved thousands of lives, both in war and in civil life. How many racist men denied themselves life because the plasma that could save them was taken from the blood of a black man. In 1972, New York Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm became the first woman to seek any political party's presidential nomination. Congresswoman Chisholm was the first black presidential candidate for each party. And four years before her historical presidential run, she became the first black woman elected to Congress when she won her home state's 12th congressional district. You don't hear too much about Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, but she was determined not to let the white political bosses stop her from trying to move her brothers and sisters into a better life. Another black person, our president, Dr. Barack Obama. He developed a medical insurance plan some refer to as the Obamacare. We know it is the Affordable Health Care Act. And without this health plan that serves all people, white, black, and brown, millions of Americans would have been denied medical treatment during this global pandemic. The races that were in Congress mocked President Obama for his vision of a health plan that was not based on income. But he persisted, and like the black crayon in the crayon box, he stood out, stood up to those that had no vision. And Obama's work was recognized by the Nobel Peace Prize Committee, and he received an award for his work. As president, he was openly insulted when the Speaker of the House would not work with him to help him raise the American people to a better life. Congressmen called him a liar without cause. Some religious leaders would not support him, but this black man never wilted and he never backed down. He just became more stately and more dignified. Because of this oratorical style, his speeches to the American people drew large crowds. Men and women of every color lined up by the thousands for blocks after blocks to go into stadiums to hear him speak. Even today, because of his popularity, he can draw huge crowds and fill up any arena. That's why he was a two-term president. President Obama faced death threats and derision without flinching because he knew he was a child of the almighty God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the king of kings. Today, the racists, the bigoted, the would-be segregationists, the cowards hiding behind a Confederate flag want to know why black people of all colors are frustrated and angry and out of patience? The answer is no one down through the time has heard the cries of the oppressed. No one heard the slaves crying out for mercy coming from the black men and women as slaveholders beat them without mercy. No one, no one listened as a slave was beaten just before being ordered to cook for the slave master. No one heard their cries for mercy as they were whipped in the field and they picked cotton even though their hands were bleeding. No one heard as the hot sun blistered the black bodies all chained together. No one, I'm telling you, no one listened to the cries for mercy as assaulted and raped black women birthed to the babies in the muddy rice field. No one listened to the men and women crying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, as they were lynched and set on fire. Who heard the cries of those black creations of God crawling on the ground screaming, I can't breathe? No one listened 
Cause down through the years, no one cared. We are still being abused, mistreated, disrespected, and murdered. The violent races of this country continue to choke the breath out of us, continue to put their knees on our throats, continue to try and take the breath of the lives that God gave us, the beautiful breath, the stately people, black people, but you can't destroy the color black. Black lives matter to our creator God. When the slave trade began, bigots, segregationists, and racists tried to take away the authority and power of God, not to create black lives, but to end black lives. During the Atlantic Ocean crossing of the Middle Passage, murderous racists took black lives. On the plantation, slaveholders took away the lives of black men and women. The white races made a holiday out of murder as they got dressed up and held outdoor parties while watching innocent black men being hung from trees. And they called these parties picnics and the entertainment was death. Lynching was the way slaveholders tried to control their slaves and was used to terrorize and punish the slaves. Lynching was supposed to make the black man and woman subservient and impotent. Author Lawrence Lima wrote, terror lynchings occurred in the 12 Southern states more than twice a week between 1877 and 1950. That's 3,950 black men and women that died. They died without cause. Now in these times, white men are lynching black men with strangulation holes and knees on their throats and gunshots. Violent white men and women have been trying to commit genocide since the first slave ship landed on the shores of America, but they will not be successful. God has protected the black race all these years. However, how else? Can our survival be explained except we are in God's hands? God gave us the breath of life. God gave us the breath of life. And no one, no one but God has the right to take it away. Black lives matter to God. This, my 88th year of life, and my husband's 89th, and we have both felt the sting of racism. We have seen our grandmothers and grandfathers feel the pain that comes from racism. I remember my mother and father telling me and my 13 brothers and sisters about nasty encounters with bigots and racists because the white races didn't like the color black. You know, it's the same black skin the slave owners took advantage of, raping the black woman in the fields and the bonds using black women for their own pleasure and sometimes selling the baby or child into slavery. As a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother, I can't imagine the pain our ancestors have gone through. Our journey has been rugged, but we still stand. Stand like that black crayon in the crayon box. We stand up and we stand out. Although the torture, humiliation, and degradation that was forced to endure, we still stand up. What the races don't get is we have God on our side. And every morning we rise and put on the whole armor of God. We dress our black bodies in the protective armor that the Apostle Paul said to put on in Ephesians 10, 18. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his night. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, just stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, 
with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I read that last line and it ends by including all saints white saints, brown saints, and black saints, all the children of God and all willing to put themselves in harm's way by walking together and protesting together. I have changed. I have changed. The people walking and marching to call attention to a social system that allows death to go unpunished, just like the Southern lynchings have gone unpunished have we changed things have changed i have lived through the 50s and our attack on segregation at lunch counters housing and school i have lived through the 60s and 70s the marches and voting rights bill i am here i am here as we once again face the bigots and the ignorant in high places i have changed i feel more urgent than i used to May it may be because I have a great grandson and I want him to grow up free, free to travel anywhere by car in peace, not worried about an unlawful police stop that could lead to violence, free, free to live as a peaceful man any place he can afford without being concerned about stand your ground thugs, free, free to live and work as he is able free to live as God's guidance him, to live without fear. I don't want this country to return to blind racism and racial hatred that some elected officials in high political office are currently excusing as if we keep the pressure of change, keep the pressure of change on every person in office, every organization with power, and inform every citizen that the black race is not going away. Our children, my grandson, your grandson will live free. I have changed and so have those white people with concern and open minds. Their numbers have increased since 1960 after the murder of George Floyd. I noticed a change in the participants of protests against brutality injustice and unprosecuted lynching. There are more younger and more white protesters joining the outcry against the racists and the protests are global. Injustice is protested in Africa, Europe and South America and somewhere in my memory, somewhere in my memory, I hear that old spiritual, walk together children, now don't get weary. We are part of God's family, and we have guardian angels watching over us. We must continue to march and protest for the complete recognition by everyone in this country that all life is precious, and this includes black lives. Amen. Invitation to Christ by Pastor Weldon Smith and his wonderful great-grandson, Sean. Good morning. Uh, I am Pastor Weldon Smith, and I'm um, giving you a welcome uh, to our church. Of course, you know, we're still having virtual services due to the pandemic, but we have kept God's doors open. And you are the benefits the beneficiaries of all of our efforts. Uh, today we had a wonderful message from uh, my beloved wife, Mrs. Blanche Smith, on the race relations as they stand today and our hope for tomorrow. And I'm so glad and so happy that the biblical reference was Genesis because no races are established in Genesis. So we thank our Father that his history goes on, and we, we thank our Father for the opportunity to join his church and to join in his celebration and to join in the victory 
that the church is triumphant and the church will go on. And I'm here this morning, you know my sidekick, Sean is here, and he gives you a welcome to our church also, right Sean? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and so welcome to the church virtual and welcome to the to the church in, in, on the electronic church. Please refer to our website for all the information you need on upcoming events and on and on the programs that are coming and also the future uh, messages that will be brought. We give you all God's welcome and we praise God for you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Presbyterian Church of St. Orbans. We're ho we hope you're having a wonderful day. This virus will pass um, with the help of God. Um, we hope you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful night. God bless everyone in the church. And um, so, see you. I'll see you. Discipleship Selection He by Minister Hal Thompson and Minister Roundtree. Let us affirm our faith by reading the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hate. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue to express our profound gratitudes towards your faithfulness in worship and in giving. Also, we want to remind everyone listening this morning regarding sending your tithes and offering and online giving to your church. Remember, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 exalts us with these words. So let each one give as they purpose in their heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Please keep connected on the prayer line Monday to Friday at 12.30 noon. Telephone number 712-770-5242. Access code 293-822-549 hash. I'll read that again. Telephone number 712-770-5505. Access code 293-822-549 hashtag. If you have any prayer concerns, please Test prayer request or praise reports to 347-494-0897. The Presbyterian women request that all women send their assessment for Women's Day to their home church. Benediction by Pastor Weldon Smith and his wonderful great-grandson. Great before we uh, close all together and have the benediction, we want to offer up our prayers for our beloved pastor, Reverend Edward Davis, that God heals him completely from top to bottom. We also want to lift up all those that are sick and shut in and even though most of us go out on a limited basis because of the virus, there are some that are sick and cannot uh, rise out of their sick beds. So we want to keep them in prayer also. As you know, Sean just gave you a welcome to the church and an invitation to join our virtual church. And our benediction this morning the, minister, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. And may the Holy Spirit of God accompany you throughout this coming week and may we return to each other if not physically and we can return to each other and keep each other in the spirit but god go with you and keep you amen and amen as we all know reverend dr davis had an automobile accident so i just want you guys to pray for him um Keep him in God's hands, and you guys too. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Walk Together, Children, by Minister Hell Thompson. Yeah.
children don't 